We had a really interesting question come up just this past week in my free Facebook group, Artwork Living. And the question all revolved around, does style matter in making sales of your artwork? In other words, does one style sell better than another? So a little quick background story. So this um, member of my Facebook group, had attended a webinar where the person who was presenting told the audience that in order to make sales of their work, they needed to switch their style. That if they were a representational painter, that they needed to move to becoming an abstract painter in order to have any sales of their art happen. So this flummoxed, understandably, the member of the group and she came into the group to ask everyone's opinion about that. And I'm so very glad that she did because I think she got fantastic feedback from everyone in the group about what the reality is about the impact of style on sales. But I wanted to share that with everybody in case you're a member of the group and you hadn't seen that post yet. Or if you are not a member of the Facebook group and this is something that you've wondered about at one time or another. So the truth is that there's space in the art world for every style of art. And there's an audience out there to appreciate that style. It used to be that there was more of a singular art world one main art world that dominated the whole system. And you had to paint according to that style in order to make any sales. That was back when there were more gatekeepers, when galleries were the only way to really make a living in painting, to make consistent sales. That's just not the way it is anymore. The whole system has changed and been disrupted in our favor. So there is indeed not just one art market anymore. There are multiple art markets. There are niches, small groups around every style that there is. And if you're not sure that I'm telling you the truth about this, just go look at Saatchi Art, Artsy, or You Gallery, some of those big online galleries, and look at the different styles that they have listed on their website. Go to any successful commercial live gallery and look at the range of artwork in there. Because a gallery knows that in order to survive, they have to cater to the tastes of their audience. And that audience is diverse. So there is no longer just one style that's out there that's gonna make you sales. So step one is I want everybody to understand that style is not the only determining factor in your making sales in your artwork. And that there is indeed an audience out there somewhere, you just may not have found them yet, for whatever style that you're working in. There is no singular art world anymore. There are multiple art worlds. Second thing, the question that comes out of that is, well, how do you develop a style? Well, to get a style, if you don't have one already, there's only one real route that works. And that, my friends, is to paint. It's a really simple answer. Get out your paints, get out your tools, whether you paint with brushes or knives, and paint. Paint consistently. It means that you need to show up in some way every day to work on your painting practice. As I tell my students all the time, only paint on the days that you eat, which means you need to be painting pretty often. Consistently painting, consistently showing up, which means posting on social media, being active online, is both the way that you build a style and you build an engaged audience. It's not gonna happen by painting occasionally. It's not gonna happen by posting occasionally. You have to commit, if that's what you want and desire, to showing up on a regular basis. 
So style doesn't happen by thinking about it or reading a book. It happens through the act of painting itself. Does that mean you can't make any sales until you've painted for the 10,000 hours that they talk about in developing mastery? No, it means that you need to get started now and you need to invite people along on your painting journey. You don't have to be a master to already start having sales of your art, but you do need to be making art that's good. We're gonna talk about that again in just a second. So what sells? What sells, and when you look on those sites, Saatchi Art, Artsy, and You Gallery, you'll see that every style of artwork sells. So it's not style. Style is not the determining factor. Yes, abstract art sells. Yes, representational art sells. Yes, expressionistic art sells. Full range. Full range of subject matter as well. But there is something that you'll notice across the board in all styles and subject matter about artists whose work sells. First, they show up consistently. Second, they have strong paintings. And what do I mean by strong paintings? So strong paintings happen through a number of factors. Strong paintings happen when you create a dynamic composition with a strong focal point. Strong paintings happen when you have an interesting value pattern because the human eye is geared for that. We're cued right in on strong value patterns. You have a strong painting when you have a full range of color. When you're really implementing all four aspects of color, hue, value, intensity, and temperature. You have a strong painting when you create a sense of light and form, and you do that through color. So those four main characteristics of a strong painting, and again, it applies to all styles and all subjects, strong composition, strong use of value, full range of color, and a sense of light and form. When you look at any paintings that have a strong, enduring impact, you'll notice that the artist has implemented all four of those things. They're all important. You can get attention with just one or two of them, but to really have a full impact that stands out over the others that are surrounding you, you got to do them all. So if somebody is telling you that you can't be yourself, you can't paint what you love in order to find a, a community of supporters, in order to find an audience for your work, I want you to thank them so much for their input because it always works to be polite. And usually when people are giving you advice like that, most of the time it's coming from what they think to be true and from the goodness of their heart, thank them profusely and walk away. And when it doesn't ring true to what you know to be important to you, let it go. They are not your person. They're not part of your tribe. Walk away fast. Instead, be yourself first and foremost. It does not work to paint for the market. You have to paint what you love and what you know. That is a rule that's been true since people have started painting. You have to love what you do. If you don't, if you're painting for the market, people will know and it will not attract them. I've seen that happen over and over and over again. So paint what you love and then go out to find a community of other people who love those same kinds of things. In other words, get in front of a market that already exists. You don't have to go create a market. You just need to find the one that's already out there. Like I said earlier, there is a market for every style and subject that you can possibly come up with. You just haven't found them yet if you're not making sales yet. You're not showing up consistently for them. So you need to find that community that's passionate about those same things. And then here is the real key. And I want you to take this to heart. 
You have to serve the heck out of them. And service means it's not just about sales. It means you have to, in some way, make their life better through your art. Mm. That's the one I want you to ponder on. And I want you to think about it and drop a comment back in here if you think you're already tuning in on how you can serve your community. Let me know in the comments below which one of these things you feel like you're kind of stuck on right now. And let's talk about diving into making those better. But bottom line, find your community. Do what you love and then serve that community. Take care, y'all. Happy painting, everybody. Bye-bye for now.